Oh wow, check it out. It's Crash and Bash em. I reviewed this game when I was a clean shaven child. The graphics as well are actually quite pleasant. The characters look good. And I don't know what I was talking about. This was the first Crash game to be picked up by another random developer after Naughty Dog lost the rights of the character to Universal. And that does spell bad news at the offset, but at least the new devs, Eurocom, didn't try to poorly replicate the original formula. They instead tried to do a Mario Party, but with a gorilla with an anus for a face. Doesn't mean the game is great though, despite it doing its own thing, because, spoiler warning, I don't think it's that great. Can we judge the the game by the first world of adventure? No. We can't. Ignore him. Now even though Crashly Bashly is a party game, if you're all by yourself, you can indeed play a single player adventure mode. Ooh, get you. And in adventure mode, I decided to pick Cortex because when he's running, his hands turn into a canary. But you can't call this an adventure without a story. I mean, what do you think this game is? Hiking. So the intro cutscene clues us in on what's going on. In the most basic of terms, Aku Aku and Uka Uka are having an argument, which almost leads to the worst boxing match of all time because none of them have any arms. Prepare to fight! No, Uka Uka. The ancients would not allow it. Ah, do you know what? Aku Aku is right. Yeah, we've never done that before at all. No, we don't fight because the ancients won't let them do it. No, not even once. Don't want to piss off those ancients. Oh, by the way, who are the ancients? You know what's even weirder about this, though? The first line spoken in this cutscene is... How many times? Times must you be told? You cannot defeat me. So why does Uka Uka even try to fight Aku Aku after all of that? Why give him the ancient's excuse? You both can't hurt each other. Aku Aku said so. Do you have memory loss, Uka Uka? Can Wood get Alzheimer's? Anyway, after this, Aku Aku has had enough and is about to bring the thunder. This bickering can go on no longer. Or he's gonna sound like a fed up mother. And logically, just like when you catch your own kids bickering, there's only one way to settle it. Illegal cage fighting! <laughs> Yes, instead of settling this tiny squabble between themselves, these omnipotent and all-powerful masks decide to steal their supposed friends and pit them against each other until only one is left alive. And Crash is A-OK -okay with it. What is he doing? <laughs> And so, by winning a random set of battle party games and fighting boss levels at the end of each warp room, your chosen character must beat out the competition for the glory of their own mask that forced them into this horror, and this somehow proves how great they are and who wins this pissy little argument. Even stranger though is that since I picked Cortex, I'm fighting for the evil side, and yet the boss levels are all the same if you picked the hero side. Even Uka Uka says in the boss cutscenes, You must first meet an old friend. So if they're old friends, why are we fighting the bosses? If the bosses are evil and friends with Uka Uka, including the final boss, doesn't that mean that the evil side already wins this argument by default? What's going on? Why are we fighting them? Oh, don't worry, he's flat now. This story is a total disaster. No other words. It's as much of a mess as Tiny Tiger's character model. Cortex's hair, though, is on point. Look at it. It's so on point that it is a point. His hair is so sharp he could open an envelope with it. So Crash to Coot Bash to Coot, like I mentioned earlier, is Mario Party for the entirety of the gameplay, but without the game board or dice to roll, and it's worse. You just win mini games over and over again to progress. And where some of these games on their own are totally passable and fun in their own right, where Crash Bash fails is with the T of it all. This is one of the most repetitive games I've ever played. In fact, it's so repetitive that in the first warp room, you get four-way pong, polar bear fighting, pogo stick bouncing, and 3D brawling. And then in the second warp room, you get four-way pong, polar bear fighting, pogo stick bouncing, and 3D brawling. Foon! Sure, there's an additional game mechanic added in for the copies, but they're still copies. They feel exactly the same to play. And many of these minigames are copied up to three times throughout the adventure mode in different warp rooms, with nothing but a different coat of paint. And that's not all. Get this. In order to unlock the boss battles from each warp room, you need a certain amount of trophies. And no, your wife doesn't count. To get the trophy on one of these levels, you need to win the minigame in question, not once, not twice, but three times. And this isn't a best out of three system or anything like that. The game keeps on going until anybody in the match wins three times. Meaning that you could potentially replay the level nine <laughs> times in a row in order to win just one trophy. And that's assuming you even win on the ninth attempt. La -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da. So you get the four trophies from Warp Room 1, unlock Boss 1, and then think to yourself, God damn, I can't wait to see something new. And then, oh dear, Warp Room 2 has exactly the same minigame style as you just did, aside from one extra level you haven't seen before, and you still need to win them all three times each. And then all of a sudden, boss two won't let you in because you need trophies, gems, and crystals to get inside. But where do you get the gems and crystals from, you bitch? Why? By going back through all the levels you've already replayed a million times over and replaying them again. But this time with an overly frustrating crutch, like randomly growing insta-kill mushrooms taking over the stage, or you beginning the stage with less health than everybody else. Yes, Engine, this is a great idea 
idea. When two giant missile equipped mech suits can't take down a tiny bandicoot, just spin around and spit balls out of your mouth, I'll get them. So yeah, the single player adventure mode, aside from the decent bosses, Pretty horrendous. And unfortunately, unless you own a first edition black labeled European version of Crash Bash, like I do, there's no code you can put in anywhere to unlock all of the multiplayer games straight away if you want to just jump into a match with a few friends. You have to go through the adventure mode and unlock everything in that tedious goddamn way. Otherwise, you're stuck with four mini games total with four different skins. And that is it. Unless you have a copy of Spyro 3. Yes, stay with me. By holding L1 and R2 on the title screen for Spyro 3 and pressing square, you get access to a hidden Crash Bash demo. And then, if you type in a specific code on the title screen of the demo, you are then granted access to a cheat menu, where you can not only manipulate and change basically everything on the screen, but also have access to nearly every single level, fully multiplayer compatible and all. You are missing a few of the final mini games, and you only have three bosses to pick from, boss three of which apparently being Homer Simpson. <laughs> But yes, essentially, nearly the entire Crash Bash game is hidden on a Spyro 3 disc, which I guess just goes to show you how little space Crash Bash's full disc was using in the first place, and therefore shows you how much effort went into it. I can't believe they left this here accidentally, it's so damn cool. Look, you can even see the exact date and time that this beta build of the game was placed onto the Spyro 3 disc, how Aww. adorable. Okay, what I just said about the no effort thing, that was harsh. There is quite a bit of effort put into some of Crash Bash. The soundtrack, for instance, is one of Crash's best on the PS1. In fact, below Crash 2, I'd say it was the second best, so go and check it out. And when you do have all the mini games unlocked, it is a decent distraction with friends, but getting to that point legitimately, which the majority of players of this game had to do, is hellish. And my lord, aside from the repetition and copy-paste mini games, the looks of this game really end up burying it. Too many freeze frames I was able to grab from this game were absolutely horrifying and a far cry from the detail you'd expect from the Crash universe, even on the PS1. And come on, man, Cortex's head here looks like a boy old egg on top of a frisbee. I can see a good game here. But it's not in there. And that's probably the saddest thing. Oh, I don't know. Maybe if I shout at it, it will be better. Oi! That didn't work.